Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's Grade 6, Unit 2, Lesson 7, Practice Problems Review is on creating double number line diagrams. In Question 1, a recipe for cinnamon rolls uses 2 tablespoons of sugar per teaspoon of cinnamon for the filling. Yum! Complete the double number line diagram to show the amount of cinnamon and sugar in 3, 4, and 5 batches. And as you can see here, we have cinnamon as our top and sugar on the bottom line. And so for our cinnamon, we're counting up by one. So one, two, three, four, and five. On the bottom here, we're counting up by two. So zero, two, four, six, eight, and ten. And as you can see, this is our one batch, our second batch, our third batch, our fourth batch, and our fifth batch. And that's the question. All right, let's continue on. Question two, one batch of meatloaf contains two pounds of beef and half a cup of breadcrumbs. Complete the double number line diagram to show the amounts of beef and breadcrumbs needed for one, two, three, and four batches of meatloaf. Well, we know we're going to have to divide this up. And that should be four batches. Two pounds of beef, half cup of breadcrumbs. So our first batch would have two pounds of beef and half a cup of breadcrumbs. And then on the top, we're counting by twos. So zero, two, four, six, and eight. On the bottom, we're going up by halves. So zero, one half, one, one and a half, and lastly, two. And that is completing the double number line to show the amount of beef and bread crumbs needed for one, two, three, and four batches of meatloaf. All right, question three. A recipe for tropical fruit punch says, combine four cups of pineapple juice with five cups of orange juice. Create a double number line showing the amount of each type of juice in one, two, three, four, and five batches of the recipe. All right, so we're going to draw two lines as best as we can here. Saving space here on the left side for our labels though. So, number line one, number line two, and our labels here are pineapple juice, and our unit, don't forget your unit, is cups, and then we have orange juice, and our unit once again is cups. We're going to need five batches, but we're going to start our number line with our zero. And then we're going to try to equally space out now our next five. So one, two, three, four, five. And directly underneath as best we can, one, two, three, four, five. Our ratio is four cups per, or four cups of pineapple per five cups of orange juice. So we have four cups of pineapple per five cups of orange juice. And now to finish the number line, we can count up by fours for the pineapple. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20. And on the bottom, counting by fives, 10, 15, 20, 25. And again, here in red, you don't have to include this, but it's kind of helpful to maybe visually see that we have zero, one batches, two batches, three batches, four batches, and five batches. Again, it doesn't have to be labeled on the number line, but sometimes it's easier to see that. Now, question B. If 12 cups of pineapple juice are used with 20 cups of orange juice, will the recipe taste the same? Let's look at this. We have 12 cups of pineapple juice. That's this here. 
with 20 cups of orange juice. That's that there. Will the recipe taste the same? Well, no, it won't. Um, the ratio would need to be 12 to 15 or 16 to 20 for the recipe to taste the same. We create a double number line and we interpret it. Again, just looking here, 12 and 20 are in different spots. 12 to 15 would taste the same, 16 to 20 would taste the same, but you're basically saying this is three batches worth of pineapple juice and four batches worth of orange juice. That's not gonna taste the same. All right, let's continue on. C, hey, look, it's hidden. The recipe also calls for a third cup of lime juice for every five cups of orange juice. Add a line to your diagram to represent the amount of lime juice in different batches of tropical fruit punch. I didn't know that was there. Forgot about that one. All right, let's add a line. And this is lime juice. And going back to it here, it was in cups and it was one third for five orange. So one third for five orange. And again, in cups, we have zero, one third for every five orange juice. And so drawing in these numbers here, one third, two thirds, three thirds is one. And then we have one and a third and one and two-thirds. All right, forgot about that question. Sorry about that. So I think we answered the question. Add a line to your diagram to represent the amount of lime juice in different batches. Yep, we got it. All right, let's continue on. Question four. For one batch of pink paint, it uses two cups of red paint and seven cups of white paint. Maid made a large amount of pink paint using 14 cups of red paint. How many batches of pink paint did she make? Well, our single batch uses a ratio of two red to seven white. She's saying now that she made a large batch with 14 red. Well, how many batches is that? How do we get from 2 to 14? What do we multiply by? Well, we multiply by 7. And so this is going to be 7 batches of pink paint. And then when you look for how much white did she use? Well, multiply that by seven to maintain the equivalent ratio, and you'd end up with 49 cups of white. So 49 cups. In our next question, question five, find three different ratios that are equivalent to three to 11. Well, we'll start off with three to 11. And what if in one of these we multiply both numbers by 2? That would end up at 6 to 22. What if we multiply by 3? You'd end up with 9 to 33. And lastly, what if you multiplied by... 10. Just to change it up, you would have 30 to 110. To answer the question, explain why your ratios are equivalent, 
when multiplying, and the key word here is multiplying, both parts of a ratio by the same number, the ratios are still equivalent. Question six. Here's the diagram that represents the pints of red and yellow paint in a mixture. Select all statements that accurately describe the diagram. So it looks like we have six red to two yellow, and maybe we can also visualize this as three red to one yellow when it breaks down. So the ratio of yellow paint to red paint is two to six. Well, is that true? I have two yellow to six red. That is true. B, for every three red, there's one yellow. Three red, one yellow, that also appears to be true. For every pint of yellow, there are three pints of red, okay? For every pint of yellow, there are three pints of red. Yes, that is true as well. For every pint of yellow, there are six pints of red. No, that's not true. We just said it was one to three. So D is false. And E, the ratio of red paint to yellow paint is six to two. Well, six red, two yellow, Red to yellow, six to two, those orders match, numbers match, you're good there. So A, B, C, and E are your correct answers. And that's it for this grade six, unit two, lesson seven, practice problem review on creating double number line diagrams. Good luck.